Hey everybody, it's me, Mark of Manlock Things, and today we're gonna to talk about the Lomo Instant Automate Glass. Long name, but a small camera. Let's take a look at it. Okay, so let's talk about that camera. Lomo was kind enough to lend it to me after a few of you were writing me on the Lomo Instant Square video that I should test out this camera. I have to be honest, I have two sides to view the camera, uh, positive and negative. I think for the right people, it's, it's, it's again, like not every camera fits every person. And this camera is great, but it doesn't fit my style of shooting. So what was the problem I had with it? And then we're gonna jump in the positive sides of the camera. But first off, the few de details to the camera. It shoots on Instax mini film, Fuji Instax mini film this little pack here. The cheapest instant film you can get at the market, but also the smallest one at the moment. It has a really good lens built in this camera and it has the basic functions we know from all the other cameras from that alone produces. So it has built-in flash, it has multi-exposure over and underexposed EV and automatic or bulb mode. It also needs some batteries, that's for sure. In the back you get put in the film. The cool thing on the lid, there's the remote and oh yeah, one, one cool thing. I found the remote for my Instax Square again. It was in the car under the seat. Here on a leech, so you don't lose it as easy. It has a timer and an instant shot. Easy as that. Open the camera. At the bottom of the lens, you have this little wheel and you just turn it here. Just grab it. So here you see we are on infinity and then we can move around to 30 centimeters of close up focusing, which is amazing. 30 centimeters is pretty close if you want to shoot pictures. But on the other hand, this camera is super wide angle. It's like amazingly wide angle. So that's 30, meters, uh, 30 centimeters away of the subject. And you know this setup, that's the one here. Being 30 centimeters away of that image, I was still able to capture a lot of things. This camera is really sharp. It has an amazing image quality, but that wide angle drove me crazy. It's not the style I shoot, I would say. It's way too much, well, it's just too wide for me. My style of shooting is more portrait um, oriented and conceptual stuff, so I need something that's a little bit more focused in. And that is too wide for my style of pictures. If you would be into street photography, maybe, and shooting stuff like this here, like I mean, I like the camera for, for that street style images, it's amazing. But for that close up portrait that I love to do, couldn't really find the use of the camera. But it is amazing to work on the streets outside. The glass, the lens is just a really good quality. That's incredibly sharp. Don't worry about that. It will always be like super sharp if you have to, fo have to focus right. But on the other hand, getting close to 60 centimeters to your portrait, model like you're like in their face just to shoot a picture of them is not the best idea sometimes you want to have a little bit of distance maybe to give them the freedom a friend of mine Jahan from do you develop he's mostly shooting street and he's doing an amazing job you should definitely check out his instagram profile if you haven't and i think for him this camera would be amazing since he's just running around the streets capturing moments and everything also he's trying to capture a lot of the surroundings i think for him this camera would be amazing he's also really about quality he shoots on Leica and stuff so also the glass lens in this camera would be a perfect choice for him. That is purpose where I see that camera really work and really get its um, its strengths out. That's the good sharp glass and the wide angle. But if you're in more into portrait photography and snapshots, I think this camera is not really the, the right one for you. Uh, it should be a little bit more closer, narrower lens and great to work with. Otherwise, because I haven't had too much time to shoot it out doors since the weather in Austria was like freakingly cold my, up till minus 17 degrees in Vienna. As he, uh, I told you in the video with polaroids and temperature, check it out. It's not too good to shoot with minus degrees outside. <laughs> even to keep that camera warm is hard at, at this temperature because I can't even keep my body warm. Should we go through the basics of the camera? Lens up front, check it out. Yeah, so we got the integrated flash up here. We're pushing down that button and then we can turn the lens all the way down till it locks in place and now it's off. On this side the film comes out and that's so that's something important to keep in mind when you're shooting this this, this camera where the film comes out because <clears throat> I wasn't paying too much attention when thinking about it most of the pictures I shoot upside down maybe it I mean it wasn't on purpose to shoot them upside down but I really well held the camera the wrong side <laughs> I was just like I don't know for me it feel natural to hold the camera like I mean I didn't know at the beginning I was like Okay, maybe I should shoot like this, but no, it's actually, yeah, you shoot like this 
and then I was like, well, it's turned inside, and then it's mirrored. So, how, how, which way should I hold it? So, so as you can see, the image comes out with the exposed side to the back. Important to know. Lands up and shutter down here. Shutter is nice. The shutter is actually built here. It has a little bit more of a push than the instant square, which I prefer a lot. And it also has this little, this little reflective side, so you can shoot a selfie of yourself in that thing. So on the other hand, it also has a tripod mount, which is really amazing. If you want to shoot landscapes on really small format, don't know how that works out, but like a tripod mount is always useful. In the back here, batteries change the film. We have to open the latch up back here and put in a new one. So on the side, you see these little LEDs here, and these indicate how much frames you got left in the camera. Easy as that. Otherwise, I can't tell too much about the camera. Brief little update on my what I'm doing and what I, what's on my mind map at the, at the moment. So I'm currently sitting in my office room. That's actually, here's my computer screens in front of us and that's the wall and sofa and yeah, that's my working area. But for sh showing off 8x10 and large process and everything, I need a little bit more space. So I'm currently trying to set up a new recording set uh, behind that wall in my living room or studio, as you would say, and we will shoot the 8x10 videos there. So that's what's currently going on right next to these videos here. So, and what I'm also working on is trying to do live streaming. I don't know if that's interesting for you guys. Uh, I think it would be really cool to have some Q&A live streams uh, or just some talks. Uh, I want to show off some techniques on live so you guys can drop me questions and everything. Um, so that would be an idea, like doing Q&A live streams. Would that be something you guys would be interested? If yes, please drop me a comment below and also if you are interested in it, drop me some questions that we could talk about in the live stream. That would be amazing. Still need to buy some equipment um, for it, so please give me some time to get the finances to buy that stuff again. But I need to get a capture card to capture that camera and stream it live to YouTube. So I hope you like that camera. I can't tell you too much about it, unfortunately. So if you like the video, thumbs up. If you don't like, thumbs down. If you have any more questions about the camera or anything, please drop a comment below. I will be happy to answer them. If you liked the video, thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to the channel. And I hope to see you next week. Bye.